Here we're told that we have a two-dimensional flow with the velocity field that's given here. And we can see that that velocity field is unsteady because there's a time in there. We're asked to determine the equations for the streamline, streak line, and path line passing through a particular point at t equals zero. In general, we would expect the streamline, streak line, and path line to all be different because this is an unsteady flow. Just recall that when you have a steady flow, all three types of lines are the same, but when it's unsteady, they can be different. So let's go ahead and start with the streamline. So we know that the slope of a streamline is everywhere tangent to the slope of the velocity vectors, so dy over dx will be equal to uy over ux, since they have the same slope, where uy is equal to y, that's just this component for the, the, from the velocity field, and ux will be this component, so that'll be x over 1 plus 2t. All right, and let's go ahead and solve the resulting differential equation, so that's what the differential equation looks like. We'll bring the y's to one side and then the x to, x's to the other side. We'll also put the t value on the uh, left-hand side. It's really arbitrary, but we'll, that's what we'll do. So we'll have dy over y, and uh, we'll also bring the t term over. Let me move this over just a bit. Plus 2t, and then on the other side we have dx over x. And then we can go ahead and integrate both sides as we go from some initial position to some final position. So we'll go from y naught to final y. We'll go from x naught to final x. Notice that I just kept the time term outside the integral because it's not a function of y. It's, it's a function of t. So we don't need to worry about keeping it inside the integral. All right, so then the left-hand side will become 1 plus 2t natural log y over y naught, and the left hand or right hand side will be natural log x over x naught when we do that integral. And we can then go ahead and take the exponential of, of both sides. The left hand side will be y over y naught raised to the 1 plus 2t power. Right hand side is x over x naught. And then, so that's our equation of the streak line in general, okay, at any given time and through any initial point. So we were asked to find the streak line through the point 1, 1. So we'll say x naught, y naught is equal to 1, 1. Oops. 1, 1. And specifically, we're also asked to find it at t is equal to 0. So we'll use those values. And when you do that, so we'll put 1 in here, 1 in here, 1 here, or I'm sorry, 0 for the time. And so when you do all that, you'll just get y is equal to x. So that's the equation of the streak line, I'm sorry, the streamline, sorry about that. That's the equation of the streamline passing through the point 1, 1 at t equals 0. It'll be actually just a straight line with a slope of 1. But in general, at any given time and any given point, that's what the streamlines look like. Okay, so that's how we find the streamline. Let's do the streak line now. So to find the streak line, we know that the x velocity is just dx over dt and the y velocity is just dy over dt. Remember that a streak line is a line that connects all the fluid particles that have passed through the same point in space at some uh, previous time or some future time. Okay, so now our x velocity was x times 1 plus 2t. Remember that, that our, this is our x velocity component right here. And our y velocity component is just y. Okay, so now we have two differential equations. We can go ahead and solve those. So we'll bring the x, we'll do the, the top one first, bring the x's to one side, t's to the other side. Do the same thing for the y component equation. Now we can solve both differential equations. We'll integrate as we go from x naught to x. And then the right-hand side will integrate from some t naught to t. So we'll get a natural log x over x naught on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, we'll have, it'll be a little more complicated. That'll be a t plus t squared minus t naught plus t naught squared. Okay, so that's 
what we get for the first equation. We'll do the second one. That one's a little easier. We have natural log y over y naught on the left-hand side and then the right-hand side. Oh, I'm sorry. We should be integrating from y naught to y and t naught to t. And then the right-hand side will just be t minus t naught. So those are our two equations. So we'll just leave those in a parametric form for our streak line. But the thing that we have to uh, be aware of for the streak line is it's a line that connects all the fluid particles that have passed through the same point in space at some previous time. So the point in space that we're interested in specifically, again, is x naught, y naught is equal to 1, 1. And here we want uh, all the fluid particles that have passed through that point in space um, at some previous time. So the, the, the previous time that they passed through it would be would be t naught. So the t naught varies from particle to particle. We want the streak line at time t equal to zero, so we want it when this this t is zero. That's like the current time. t naught is the time when the fluid particle went through that point in space at, at the previous time or maybe some later time. So we'll be plugging in t equal to zero here. So if we do that, we'll get natural log of x because it's 1 in the, uh, you know what, I'm going to put the 1 there. So x over 1 is equal to minus t naught plus t naught squared. And then the other equation we'll get will be y over 1 is equal to minus t naught. So that's the equation of our streak line through that point 1, 1 at time t equal to 0. And t naught varies. Okay, so t naught uh, T naught is a parametric variable. It, it varies because each fluid particle passes through that point 1, 1 at a different time. T naught is the time when that fluid particle has passed through that point x naught, y naught. So T naught will vary depending on which fluid particle we're dealing with. Okay, so that's the streak line. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and do the path line now. Now the path line will actually have the same set of equations, differential equations, as the streak line. And it'll actually, you'll solve it the same way and you'll get the same set of equations here. Now, but with the path line, what we really want is a single fluid particle. And because it's a single fluid particle, we want that, that one fluid particle that passed through the point x naught, y naught at one given time. So for the path line, the t naught is a fixed term. We want the fluid particle that passes through this x naught y naught when t naught is equal to zero. Okay, so let me make a note of that. So here's streak line. So the path line, we're still going to have the same set of equations right up here, but what we're going to do is we're going to have the path line for the single fluid particle that went through this point one one when t naught is equal to zero. And then as t varies, you'll trace out the movement of that, that particular path line. So for this path line, the equations will be natural log of x over 1 is equal to t plus t squared. And then the other one will be natural log of y over 1 is equal to t, because here t naught uh, is 0, and t varies. So that's our path line equation, right? Because again, for the for the streak line, t naught varies because the we're dealing with different fluid particles, and they all pass through that point x naught y naught at different times, different t naughts. For the path line, we have one fluid particle, and it passes through the point x naught y naught when t naught is equal to zero, right? Right there. So you can see that all of our equations look different. We have, for the streamline, that's this one right up here, streamline. So that looks like a straight line. For the streak line, we have this, and we have to plot that parametrically because um, I can't see, you know, just obviously what the equation of the line really looks like. You just have to plug in different values for t naught, and then see what x and y values you get. And then the path line is the same thing. We have to just plug in different values for t and then see what different values for x and y you get. If you do plug those numbers in, and I, I, I'm just going to sketch it here. Here's x, here's y, 
here's y, here's the point uh, 1, 1. And then if you plotted the streamline, that would just be the straight line, y is equal to x. And if you plug in the different values for t naught for the streak line, let me go ahead and use a different color for that one. For the streak line, and when you plug in the different numbers, it'll look something kind of like this. And I'm not doing a very good job of sketching it, but that'll be our streak line. Again, you have to plug in different values for t naught and, and then see what it looks like. And then the path line would look something like this. And again, this one is our streamline. So you can see all three lines are actually different from one another, which is not unexpected because it's an unsteady flow and they can all be different. And the way you produce this plot, a streamline is pretty straightforward, but for the streak line and the path line, you just have to do it parametrically. For the streak line, just plug in different values for t naught, get your x and y. And for the path line, plug in different values for t and get your x and y. Okay, so the important thing that I really want you to get out of this problem is number one, how you how you find the equation for the streamline. So that one hopefully makes a lot of sense. The slope of the streamline is equal to the slope of the velocity vector. For the path line and streak line, you have the same set of differential equations, and so you'll end up with the same set of uh, x and y equations you know, as a function of t and t naught. It'll look ex this looks exactly the same for the streak line and the path line. What's different between them is which variable uh, is the parametric variable. For a streak line, again, the fluid part, you're dealing with many fluid particles and each one passes through the point x naught, y naught at different t naughts, different initial times. So in that case, the t naught is the parametric variable. variable. For a path line, you want one fluid particle, which passes through the point x naught, y naught at a single value for t naught. So there, the t is parametric because you're tracing out the path of that one fluid particle at, over different times. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, we'll go ahead and end the example there.